Good morning, Good morning everyone. everyone. Looks like we've got a pretty good sized class today. Uh, we've got a few more people just logging in right now, so we're going to give them a minute. You got about one more minute to go grab your cup of coffee, and then Taylor and I are going to get started with a brand new class. You guys are sort of the guinea pigs, I hate to say, but uh, we're actually teaching you a brand new class this morning. I'm really excited about it. Taylor, Debbie, and I have worked hard on it to uh, whether you're a new agent just wanting to know how to put in new listings or whether you're a seasoned agent looking for some tips, I think everyone will get a few things out of this class today. So, all right, we've got a few more people logging in and then we'll get started. Good morning, Taylor. How are you? I'm good. Good morning. It was a, a good start to the day. I've been able to kind of go in and get everything pulled up for you guys today. We have a lot of content to cover. Uh, we are going to be basically explaining how to use Paragon and a few of our ancillary products for adding your listing, maintaining your listing, the flow of data, photos from A to Z for you today. So it's gonna be a good one. Even if you're using the system regularly, this is going to give you a lot of refreshers and some shortcuts and things like that. Well, I am excited. So, yep, we're going to, and we even have a few admins I'm seeing pop in. So there'll be something for you as well. Basically, we're going to show you some time-saving tips and techniques to adding listings in, doing maintenance, and of course, Taylor, who teaches our great photography class that so many have taken, she's going to be talking about some exciting new things that are coming as for photos and high resolution. We're going to, have to be talking about promoting your listings, what's you know, what do you want, how do you want to promote your listings, what tools are already there for you to do that. So, all right, it looks like we got two more people just getting logged in, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to actually go ahead and start us off and start sharing my screen. I just want to remind everybody real quick, too, though, about the chat. I just sent a message in it, so it should pop up. If you want to ask any questions in here, I'll be monitoring it while Colleen's doing her part, and then she'll be monitoring it while I do my part. Um, and Colleen was nice enough to add a few helpful handouts in here for you guys, too, that you can double click PDFs you can download that is going to kind of review some of the things that we're talking about today. So and good morning, Teresa. Thanks for using the question box. So, yeah, as Taylor mentioned, really, this is designed to be kind of a hands on class. So if you have any questions along the way, feel free to jot them down and then we'll take turns answering them. You can either use the chat or the questions. Probably the questions I think is the easiest to type in, but whatever works best for you. Oh, yeah. Right, the questions is fine, too. I have them both open. So whatever works for you. <laughs> Perfect. All right. And I just want to make sure, can we get one person to tell us just to make sure that they can hear and see us okay? And then we'll go ahead and get started. Perfect. Thanks so much. All right. Good to see so many familiar names, too. All right. Well, I'm going to turn off my fuzzy hair here and I'm going to let you see the full screen because really where we're going to start today and a little bit about my background is I've been a licensed agent for 22 years. And so really, I when I was talking to Taylor about putting this class together, I thought, you know, we have a lot of tips that we could share that make listing input a lot easier. And I, I'm talking to seasoned agents. I was just talking to a, a good friend of mine who's been doing this 20 years. He had no idea that you could auto populate from the tax records when he was putting his listing in and he was doing all of these extra steps. And so Taylor, Debbie and I, we sat down, we created an outline that we thought whether again, whether you're brand new in the business or whether you're a seasoned agent, it'll give you some tips on reducing how much information you're adding in. So you've got this great listing. How do you get it in faster? You know, how do you add a virtual tour? Can you have a branded virtual tour? What are the rules? How does it work? And so we're going to cover all of that. So I thought we'd start at the beginning today. And I'm going to pop my camera off and start showing my screen here. I thought we'd kind of start at the beginning today of where you start preparing. So I think that's a one of the keys is how do you start when you're getting when you've got that listing call? Where do you go to get the information that you need? So when you're in Paragon, you should be seeing my Paragon screen right now. The first thing you want to do to prepare for your listing is you want to go to that tax icon. 
that's where you're going to be able to go ahead and pull up Realist or the BSNA record. But one thing I like to do when I'm actually preparing to make it easier is I like to see, has this property ever closed before? Because obviously, if you're going to go tell someone, you know, what you're listing their home for, for where you're getting that price, you kind of want to know what did they pay? Has it closed? So I simply go up to this uh, little power search here at the top, this quick, this quick way to find one single property. I'm going to type in the address and then I'm going to open up that record because I want to see, has I can see that property has closed. I want to see when did they purchase that? Um, what does the record say? But there's also another reason I want to do that. When I'm on that listing record, this will take me directly into the realist tax record. This will also take you into BSNA. Now, one of your member benefits as a My Real Source member is that you get all of the BSNA records for all of the gross points, Macomb County and Genesee County at no cost. So a lot of times, like I just uh, previously sold a home in Lenox. Generally, it was a $2 fee I would have to go in and pay through BSNA for that property record. The good news is as long as you're going through Paragon, you're clicking this BSNA icon, it's going to give you that property record at no cost to you. And it's also a lot simpler. So let's take a look. So when I'm preparing for my listing, the first thing I want to do is, again, try to find that property record if it's closed. I want to go to the Realist record. I want to click on that red icon or quick action link. And that's, of course, going to take you right into all the information that you're going to need when you're listing this property. Things like the lengthy legal description. It will also show you, is it built on a basement? How many bedrooms? How many bathrooms? Is it in a sheriff's sale? Has it been passed by a quick claim deed? Did they recently refi? All of that information is directly located right through Realist on that quick action link. So let me point that link out again because I want rather fast. It's the red link right here. Now, a lot of people say, well, Colleen, why do you check Realist? Uh, isn't BSNA the one you want? Well, absolutely. BSNA is the trusted municipality record. It is definitely the one that you would want to take if there was ever a legal dispute on the property. It's the trusted municipality record and the one that the judge will look at. That's kind of located, and I apologize, I'm going to show this to you. It kind of looks like a garbage can. I apologize. It's not supposed to be a garbage can. It's actually a government pillar. Unfortunately, when Brian put it on the button, kind of shrank it, kind of made it smaller. It kind of looks a little more like a garbage can, but it's actually a government pillar. When you roll your mouse over that icon, you can see that it's going to take you to the BSNA record for that property. So a lot of people then will say, well, do we need to check both? And I do recommend checking both because sometimes you will find information in BSNA that's not in the Realist record. And remember, BSNA and our integration through with BSNA is the live server. So many other MLSs, they may allow you to go into the record. However, it's done with a feed. So that means it could take a few days for that information to be updated where we use the live BSNA server. So for instance, if you have a closing schedule tomorrow and your client maybe owes some back taxes, if you were to use BSNA through other MLSs, you would have to wait for that information to get updated through the feed. However, with ours, if they go in today and they pay that, Tomorrow, when you pull up that property record, it's going to show that that has been paid. Another thing on the BSNA record, it'll give you all the base information, but many of them are also including things like outstanding water bills. I previously just had a client, I was doing her seller's net out, and she owed $700 in an outstanding water bill. Well, that's certainly going to impact their bottom line when they're selling their home. So it's really great when you can actually go in and you can see all of that information right through their BSNA record. So again, just a quick way to start doing your research when you're getting ready to list that home is you can either, if it's never been listed before, you're going to go to that tax icon and you're going to be able to go to the Realist record here or BSNA. However, if it has been listed before, you want to check. You can type that information in that top power search. 
and then simply go to the realist record, which is located where this little quick action link is, or the BSNA record, and that's going to give you the information like that lengthy legal description and other things that you're going to want to check. Again, it will also give you mortgage history and if that property is in sheriff sale. That's always important to know, too. All right, so great news. You've gone there, you've spoke with the homeowner, you've got the listing. Now, how do you get it into Paragon easily and efficiently? There's two ways to do it. The first way is to simply go into Transaction Desk. So I'm gonna jump over to our resources, which is your online toolbox. Don't forget all of your tools with the exception of taxes are listed right here. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna say, I wanna start a new listing. I'm going to go to my online forms. I'm going to click on transaction desk. This is, of course, where we're preparing our, our transaction forms that our client is going to sign. But while we're doing that, we can also be creating the listing in Paragon right from here. So let me show you step by step how to do that. So once I'm in transaction desk, I'm going to click on this home icon over here to the left. Now, I don't want to go in and add a bunch of information, right? I simply want to go in and I want to pull from the tax records. Simply and easily, I'm going to go in and I'm going to click, I want to add a new listing. And I'm going to give my listing a name. Now, I always recommend, obviously, using the property name. Makes it a lot easier, especially if that client buys more than one home. It makes it easier to find. But if you'd like to use your client name, you could always put a dash and Bob Smith after it, if that's easier. The next important thing you want to do is you want to apply your template. So you want to apply your listing package, if you will. So I'm going to pick my company listing package because my data sheet is going to be right in that company listing package. Now, here is the trick. So this one, this will save you a ton of time, but you have to remember there is a quick trick to it. So when you want to import from the tax records, when you basically want to fill all that tax information into your listing contracts, into your data sheet, there are two ways to import it. Now, one, you could import it from the MLS, but I don't want to do that. I actually want to pull directly from that property listing. So I want to pull from Realist here. Now, here it's going to ask you for a tax ID and select a county. We're not going to know what the tax ID is. We don't, rem we don't memorize tax IDs. We memorize addresses. So here's your first quick tip. All you want to do to have that auto population start to flow is you want to go over to this magnifying glass that says tax search. Okay. Soon as you click on that, you're going to fill out three fields of information. The first field that you're going to fill out is the county that that listing is going to be located in. The second field, and you only want to fill out these three fields, by the way, is the street number. And then, of course, the root street name. Okay, and that means if it, this happens to be Wessel Drive, leave off the drives, leave off, leave off the ways, the places, the boulevards, because it's kind of like Google. It has to be very exact when you're matching up tax records. So what you want to do is you want to put in only three fields of information, the county, the street number, and the root street name. You're going to click on search tax data and all that auto population is now going to flow because it's pulling up the tax record and the parcel ID for me. I'm simply going to check it off, hit select, and I'm going to start filling out my transaction with that information. So I'm simply going to go in and hit create. And now it's going to start pulling in all of that data for me. So I don't have to go in and manually fill out all those fields of information it's going to do that on its own. So things like that lengthy legal description, tax number, subdivision, zip code, school district, tax info, all of that, as you can see, is already starting to flow into my transaction. When we go over into, and I'm just going to grab a transaction I've already started filling out just to make it a little bit easier. When you open up a transaction and you've got your listing data here, one of the important listing forms is your My Real Source data sheet. So if you've created your own form packets, you want to make sure that you've included that My Real Source data sheet because what's going to happen is one, it's going to start with the auto population. So it's going to start filling in all this stuff for you, as you can see. 
But when you're going in and you can tab through the fields, quickly fill it out. And I personally like the layout of this a little better than even Paragon because it's easy. It's almost like filling out a piece of paper and moving everything to Paragon with one click. So once you've gone in and you filled out all of the red things that are required, by the way, one of the things I do like about this data sheet too, you can see how easy it is to select the fields or the features, I'm sorry. So I can go in and I can pick very easily and quickly which of these features I want to include. And all of that information is now going to be fed over to my partial listing in Paragon. So again, we're pulling all the data from the tax records. We're filling out all of our forms and transaction desk. The next step is I don't want to have to re-enter all this information in Paragon. No, I just want to click the upload listing button here. And I want to push all of that data into a partial listing. So let me explain. When you click that button, and let's say you put in all of your own listings. When you go back to Paragon and you go into the listing section here, you're going to see something that says maintain partials. That means the listing isn't live yet. But what it's done is it's gathered all the information you fed into the data sheet and it's made a partial or temporary listing. That temporary listing is good for 180 days. And what it allows you to do is go in now, add things like photos, disclosures, things of that nature. And Taylor's going to walk you through those stuff. But now I can go in. All that information is there. I don't have to re-enter 300 fields of information. It's coming directly from that data sheet. Now, as I mentioned, I kind of like the data sheet even better when you're inputting a listing, because as you can see in Paragon, there's a lot of information to fill in here. And of course, I can open each section and I can tab through it. So I can start entering information and then simply tab to the next field and the next field. But it's really easy for me when I fill out everything on that data sheet and I just do that push. Another thing from here is if you only wanted to enter required, of course, you could do that. That will just show required fields. But instead of me having to go in and add in all of this information that I've already had to fill out on my data sheet, it just makes sense to click that auto populate button and push it into a partial. Then the next thing that happens a lot of times is people will ask me, well, what if your admin puts in your listings? Well, what happens is in my office, I would still have to fill out this data sheet and I'd have to then turn it over to my front desk admin. That front desk admin now has to go into Paragon and rekey in 300 fields of information, right? So it's a lot of work. And it's also a way that there could be errors because let's face it, our admins are busy, they're helping other agents, they're answering the phones, they're setting appointments. So the idea is if you just simply click that upload listing button, it's taking all that information over into Paragon and your admins, by the way, can see your listings, your partial listings. They can then go in, they can add in photos for you or maybe review it before making it live. Now, if you're still working on your partial listing, you can simply go to save, save partial. And again, it will save it for 180 days. When you're ready to make it live, meaning you've got all your photos in, your disclosures, again, Taylor's gonna show you how to do that today. Um, it's going to allow you to then save it and make that listing live. All right, so hopefully, and Taylor, do we have any questions before I, I jump on to the next portion? Yep, there is a question just asking why there wouldn't be a template to choose from to create a transaction for a specific agent. Well, that, that's a really good point, and I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that. If no transaction templates have ever been created by either your brokerage or yourself, when you open up that drop down, nothing will be there. However, it's really, really easy to make transaction templates. We teach that in the Transaction Desk class, too. I'll give you a quick tour of it, though. When you are in Transaction Desk, right over here to the left, and hopefully it's not cut off, sometimes GoToWebinar makes it a little bit smaller, but right over here to the left, there are some gears. If you are looking to make a transaction template, you're going to click on those gears, 
And basically that's kind of your settings or your preferences. So if you clicked on it and you're not seeing anything in that dropdown, you're gonna go over to those gears and that will allow you to open up your preferences, if you will, and that will allow you to create or modify templates that you may have made previously. So let me kind of bounce back here, I'll close some of this to make it go a little faster. So if I go into Transaction Desk, on the left side, and again, hopefully everybody's able to see that, the left side right over here where these gears are, that's kind of like where you're gonna find all of your preferences. And you will see Transaction Templates right here. Again, we'll walk you through step-by-step step how to do that in our Transaction Desk and AuthentiSign class. But you can see once that your company has made, we'll have the two people next to it. And then ones you've made on your own for yourself will have just a single entity next to it. So you'll be able to see which ones the office made and which ones you made. But if you don't see any, that just means you still have to go in and create your packets. So good question. Any other questions? Nope, not that I am seeing. Let me open up chat real quick just to make sure um, one didn't go into chat. Nope, no awesome. more questions. Okay, you did perfect. such a good job. So one other thing too, when you're talking about you're going on a listing appointment, one of the other thing you may want to consider too is when you are on your listing appointments and you're sliding across your seller's disclosure statement, that's usually a lengthy document. It usually takes the homeowner quite some time to fill it out. There's a lot of checks that they have to check off for different things in the property. And it usually takes them quite a, a good amount of time to fill that out properly. It's also one of the most important forms. So what I do recommend is sending that form ahead. And you can do that through Transaction Desk too. So if you want your clients to fill out their seller's disclosure statement right from their email, you can do that in Transaction Desk. We show you how to do that in the class. Because obviously getting that back, Taylor's going to show you how to actually add your seller's disclosure and lead-based paint and associated documents in. But it's really easy once you've got that document filled out by the homeowner, um, it's really easy then to pull it right into your listing. So, okay. So we talked about starting off in Transaction Desk to fill out that data sheet and put click that button and basically create that partial listing. You can quickly tab through those entry fields. When you're ready to access or finish up that partial, whether it's you or your admin, remember you're gonna to go to the listing section. You're gonna simply click on that partial section. This is, again, if, you, if your admin is doing this, they can go to my office listings and find all of the partials for the office. If you're doing it on your own, you can click my listings, which actually will be the default. And then all you have to do is find that specific listing, simply click on it. And then you can go in and Taylor's gonna walk you through adding those intricate pieces too. Taylor, did you want me to show adding disclosures or did you wanna do that? You can do it, you can do it. So then okay. I'll dive into the maintaining of the listing from there. Perfect. So once your client has filled out their seller's disclosure, which I, again, do through Transaction Desk because you can email it, they can fill it all out, hit save, and now it's sent back to you, the agent, for review. Once you've got that document back, that seller's disclosure or lead-based paint disclosure, or I have a good friend, Tom Lipinski, he's great about putting, like, he has a $2 million listing right now, or maybe it's three. I never I never get the, that price range, unfortunately. But he did this beautiful feature sheet for the property with all the features and the waterfront and you know just community so he added all of that into his associated documents so that people when they are ready to make an offer they can see all of that great information they know what lake it's on they know the amenities they know the features so to add in things like your seller's disclosure or your lead-based paint disclosure or your feature sheets or surveys or perk tests whatever it happens to be once you've got that partial, you can go into add or edit documents. This is simply where you can add those in. Really easy process. You can click add new. You want to simply give your description. So let's call this the seller's disclosure in lead-based paint. And of course, you could do them separately or together. And then you're literally just clicking browse. 
to find on your computer where that particular document is. So I'm going to go into my closed files here so I can grab a real seller's disclosure. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to grab my, uh, do I have my seller's disclosure in here? I thought I did. Aha, there it is. Okay, so I'm going to grab my seller's disclosure and my lead-based paint. Simply going to click on it and hit save. Now, the benefit of doing that, you can see how quick and easy that is. Remember, when, when other agents are writing an offer in Transaction Desk, it automatically pulls in any associated documents into their offer. So their buyer can quickly sign the seller's disclosure, the lead-based paint, as well as their offer to purchase in their buyer's agency. So it automatically eliminates that step for you when you're using Transaction Desk. And that's something that we've done exclusively for my real source members to make it much easier. All right, so the next thing is, let's say you're not using Transaction Desk. Let's say that you just wanted to add a listing um, from scratch right into Paragon. Again, I personally think it's a little easier to start in Transaction Desk and do that auto push and send all that data in there. But if you're not using Transaction Desk and you want to still continue to add your listing in, you're going to go to that listing icon at the top. You're going to pick what type of listing you're adding in. Obviously, if it's vacant land, you'd add vacant land, but we'll do residential just to make it nice and easy. Now, if you're starting from here and you're not using that data sheet, then what you want to do is you want to click the tax autofill button. So this is your option two, if you will. I'm going to pick tax autofill. And of course, I need to know what county it's going to be located in. So I'm going to say my new listing is going to be in Macomb County. Just like I showed you in Transaction Desk, I think the most efficient way is to simply put in the address, meaning the, the house number and the root street name. So I have put in my 41539 Wessel. I'm going to go ahead and click search, quickly pull up that property record. It's going to show you, OK, it's built. It's in Sterling Heights. Here's the zip code, kind of a little preview. I'm going to check that property record off. And of course, I want to use that to autofill my new listing. Now, if there's something you don't want to be autofilled, so let's say I'm not sure about that you're built, I can deselect a particular field and it won't auto pull that information in. But really, in most cases, I want to pull all that in to save me from having to fill out all of those fields when I'm creating a new listing. So I'm going to go click that tax autofill. Now, when I go down to the uh, property information, you're going to see it's already starting to fill that information out for me. So it doesn't fill out quite as much information. Remember, that's kind of the benefit of using Transaction Desk and doing that data sheet. I can fill everything in. And with one click, I can push it all over to Paragon without having to go field by field. However, do remember that the easiest way to fill out those fields is to simply tab through, making it easier to enter all the required information. And by the way, we did just uh, increase this. You can now autofill your listings from 83 counties in Michigan. So we have the entire state now where you can pull in, let's say you're listing Grandma's Cottage up in, uh, let's say, where is that? That would be Sage Lake area. I can actually pull that information in. Maybe you are got a family in the UP. You can pull it in from anywhere, anywhere in the state of Michigan. So that's a huge benefit. All right, with that, now we've got our partial started. I'm going to turn it over to Taylor. Taylor's going to show you the really important information. How do you get oh, those yeah. great photos <laughs> and virtual tours? And she's going to show you all the hard stuff. So I'm going to turn it over to you. Well, let's dive into a sample listing that I have. Colleen saved hers as a partial, which you guys are familiar now with what a partial would be. The biggest thing that I just want to explain about what a partial, the importance of using a partial, let me turn on my webcam so I'm not just a random voice preaching to you guys. But the one thing that I do want to say about a partial is the understanding the flow of data from the photos to the live listing. So you're going to want to make sure that you save it as a partial because then when it is made live, you have it perfected 
you have your captions, your descriptions, your photos in the order that you want. Um, you also have all your documents uploaded that Colleen showed. You proofread everything. So when you save that listing live before you, maybe you've only added the, the primary photo. You didn't go in and actually take the time to do captions and descriptions. I'll deal with that later. The problem with doing that is when we send that data to syndication sites, IDX sites, all of the data sharing partners that we have, as well as everybody who has a client set up in HomeSnap, Collaboration Center, Auto Emails, they get an alert that it is a new listing. So it get, they get those alerts instantly. Our data sharing partners get it usually within about an hour. Syndication, IDX, it kind of depends on what the brokers have set up and those vendors have set up. But it's definitely going to be a lot quicker than if you were to go in and edit that listing later with those photos and those captions and those descriptions. It saw, it is seen as a media file update versus a new listing update. So with today's market, we know how important that is. People want to see that information. They're ready to make an offer. You want to have that listing rocking, you know, ready to go, ready to rock and roll as um, beautiful as you can make it. With that, I'm going to walk you through the ideal steps as how you would market your listing and then how you can get that information out there. All right, so now you guys should be seeing my homepage in Paragon, correct? Yep, I see it. Okay, okay. So first of all, we're going to go into that partial. I have a sample one pulled up, but as Colleen said, it'll default to my listings. So whether you had an admin add this listing in, you did it yourself from transaction desk or the auto uh, populate from the tax records and saved it as a partial. You can then go in whenever you're ready, open up that listing, which I have it open right here, maintain. And now I can go in and I can, you know, tab through those fields as Colleen was doing, add those disclosures. But now I'm ready to add my photos. What's nice is you can upload multiple photos at once. We have a nine, uh, 1280 by 960 resolution right now, which is really good for the web. But we are going to be upping that which is really important to me. We do not have a, a date yet on that, but the resolution is going to be 3,072 by 2,304. I know I'm throwing numbers at you guys, but it is more than doubled the quality, the sharpness, the resolution that will be loading on their web browser, on their tablet, on their iPhone or their smartphone and they'll be able to zoom in, they're gonna see a lot more detail, it's gonna fill the frame a lot more. So I'm really excited that we're gonna be getting even higher resolution, making us the high, should be the highest in the state, I believe. So you will be able to load high resolution photos. It will, if, there, if you upload one that is way too high quality, if you shot with like your DSLR camera, the highest resolution, it will automatically compress it to that ideal resolution for the web. So that's really nice. So when you were to add these files, I can simply go in and I can go in and I can grab my photos, upload my 30 photos or however many that I have. And what's really nice too is that you can go in and you can rearrange the order of the photos. So you don't have to really worry about, you know, uploading this one first, this one second. You can rearrange it once it's uploaded. So some tips that I just will quickly share with you is kind of upload those photos in the order that are going, or rearrange those photos in the order that are going to really give them that experience of walking through the home or coming, coming home. Um, so you're going to have some sort of entrance, whether that's a foyer, a mud room, just kind of the front part of the home that they walk into the living room. Then you're going to want to do a couple different angles of the main rooms. Go ahead and switch up a close up, add a little close up photo of maybe a nice feature within that room while you're in there and then flow to the bedrooms and the bathroom that is paired with that bedroom so that you're not jumping all over the house. Uh, close with the basement, 
in backyard photos. Now you have about 10 photos to get somebody's attention. So be a little mindful of how many photos that you put up right at the beginning. So if there is something that's a great selling feature, it's on a lot of land, it has a beautiful barn, lakefront, don't wait till photo number 30 to maybe throw one of those in, have one of those up at the front. You do wanna kind of make it like a complete circle for somebody viewing this property, which is really easy to experience as an agent so that you can go in and you can just simply drag and drop in the order that you want. And then you can you know, view that listing before you make it live and scroll through those photos. Another thing that is nice about the photo feature once you've uploaded your photos is you can go in and you can simply add your captions and your descriptions. So a caption is just gonna be a short and sweet little label, something that's gonna tell them the, the space that they're in. So this seems kind of easy, right? Like, well, why do I need to do this? Isn't this obvious? Well, it depends on the home. I can tell you when I had my searches for when I was looking to buy a home, a lot of the house, a lot of the photos were jumping around. And I was like, is this the master bedroom? Is this the kitchen upstairs? Is this the kitchen in the basement? There was just a, a few times I would just see a listing that was a quick upload. And then they did not take the time to rearrange the flow of the photo. So I cannot stress the importance of that. And then that label is also really helpful because it reminds them of that. And then you have the descriptions, which allows you to add 255 characters to describe something about the home. This does take time. It's really not as time consuming as I think a lot of people think it is. You can just simply write one quick sentence to highlight something in the home, sell the home. That's what you guys are doing. You're going in and pointing out features in the home. They've already seen it possibly in the, the website that you've sent them or the, the auto email that they've seen. So why do you need to be there and point those features out? Because you do, you need to highlight those. You're selling this home to them. And if you're doing this for your, for your, um, your, for your, as a seller's agent, that's, you're doing that service for that seller by also highlighting those features. So you wanna make sure that you have that little description that's going to point out something nice about the home, imagining them living there. So a stunning two-story home in ABC community with a three-car garage. So I put a three-car garage and a circle driveway, great for entertaining. Of course they can see that, but let's just remind them that those circle driveways are really convenient for entertaining. Mud room, huge highlight to a home. Definitely want to not just add a photo of that, use a description to describe you know, the, the value of having this mudroom. So an extremely useful mudroom with custom built-in bench hangers for backpacks, purses, and briefcases and more. I wish I had one of these a part of my house right now. An office Me space too. for bills and receipts, allowing your kitchen counters to be free of clutter, as well as a large walk-in pantry and coat closet. Thank you, please, yes, please. So go ahead and highlight all those features in the photos. You will not be, you will not regret it. One thing that I do when I when I go through this in my photos class is I write the descriptions just in a Word document or my notes on my phone or my computer. And it's just a simple copy and paste. I definitely, you know, can knock it out within a few minutes of going through those photos, especially if you've been in the home and you're, you know, highlighting these features for your remarks and things like that and adding that into the data fields, you know how to sell this home. You know the features of this house. Another well, Taylor, thing I just you popped, do, oh, what? Taylor, I just popped my camera on to let you know we had a couple questions. I thought that oh, would yeah. be the easiest. So, mm -hmm. Ed had a really good question. He said, do we have an estimate on when the high resolution will happen? Brian told me this morning that he is expecting it to be second quarter and we're estimating it for May 1. So um, again, that's if, if, you know, if everything is ready to roll, we're looking at May 1, second quarter. And then uh, Debra had a good question. I'm not familiar with this. So I thought maybe Taylor, you could tell me. It seems that when you add a caption to a picture, it makes the picture half blacked out. And I think she might mean the rolling caption when you're, you know, how when you're adding it, you know, how it does that rolling caption at the bottom. 
she said, uh, it seems that when you add a caption to a picture, it makes half of the picture blocked out, even if there's only two words. Yeah, I'll have to open up the, this, this listing and just kind of show you how it should be working. Really, I don't have any issues, but yeah, it's that caption, caption, rolling caption description. So when the cursor is over there, it kind of eases in, or when you first go to that listing, it'll ease in and read that, and then they can minimize it. It is transparent, so it shouldn't black out the half, the you know, whole half of the photo or anything. So we'll have to check into that. If you do see something like that, you can always report it. There maybe you experienced some technical glitch that maybe we need to look into. But from my experience, I haven't seen that yet. And I will be able to open up this listing here in just a minute and go through go through these um, to kind of show you how it would display. And then uh, lastly, just remember, if you joined us late, if you have any questions, it's easier and let, I know a lot of people are raising their hand. It's a little tougher to unmute everybody. It just takes a little bit more time because we're limited on time. Feel free mm -hmm. to type your questions in either the question box or the chat box. And then, um, which by the way, it's minimized at the right-hand side probably of your screen. It's that orange arrow, click on it, open it up, and you'll see the handouts we've added, the chat section, and the questions. You can actually type your questions in. Okay, that's all I had. I'll pop back off now. <laughs> Nope, you're fine. Thank you, guys. And just to remind you, I don't want to spend too much time lecturing on photos. Mainly, I just want to show you some of these highlights of adding adding photos, a little, few little tips here and there. I do teach a photography program where I do cover this as well um, that we do every quarter where you can go in and you can get some uh, photography tips and um, how to, what kind of equipment to buy, lighting, things like that, so as well as maintaining your listings and the data. So maybe there were a few questions about those kinds of things with the hand with their hands um, with the with their hands being raised up, but we do go into that into the photos class as well. So there is an editing feature too of a photo that you upload. So let's say you accidentally upload it upside down, especially if you take pictures with your phone. It changes the orientation as your upload, as you see it in your phone. So you could actually export that photo and it could be an upside down image. So we have a rotation feature in here as well as a crop feature. So you can go in and you can crop this photo exactly how you would like. Please don't crop it like that, but just so you guys can see. <laughs> She's a perfectionist, can you tell? Yeah, <laughs> yeah just like drop a tiny little square of the whole photo. That's it. That works. But let me just kind of show you how this display, how this captions and descriptions will display. I open up the photo, photos, you'll see a gallery view, and you'll see that this is still a little transparent down here, and you'll see how it scrolls up in that bottom like eighth of the photo. Here for you guys, you can go back down. Man, I'd love a mudroom like that. Oh my gosh, I know. We keep talking about it. We have a little area where we could maybe expand and do that. I mean, it's already backpacks and coats and boots and stuff with kids getting older. I'm like, man, a mudroom would be really nice right now. So we go through this, these photos, some of the strategies and tips in the photo program that I teach. But as you can see, this is how the captions and descriptions will display, how they display on our single property website. They also get sent to it through data feeds. So as long as that's something that is going to be displayed on the site that it gets sent to, they will those captions and descriptions will also be sent over. So through these. Now you can go in to your listing and you can add your open houses, schedule tours really, really easily. What this will do is this will have, you know, display that as an option when somebody views this listing, go ahead and add those details. Now, what about if you created your own promotional video, you hired a videographer to do a promotional video or a tour, or maybe you have just kind of a recorded branded tour a lot of times that was happening early in the pandemic when you weren't able to leave <laughs> um, and show listings so we have this really nice feature where you can go in and you can actually 
let me close out real quick. You can add up to four URLs. So let's pretend that you are going to do a aerial view photo, a photo shoot, video, a video shoot, and you want a branded one and an unbranded one. And then you're also going to do something that's, if you guys have heard of Matterport cameras that are really popular right now, where they go in and they can, it's kind of an interactive photo shoot, so they can click and navigate through the home. You can get a branded, unbranded one of those, or just a promotional video about the property that you made, seeing more and more and more of this done on social media with agents using the reels on social media and TikTok and stuff like that. You can export URLs that you upload on YouTube or you use on social media that are you, you are using to promote the property. So you can go in and there's a tab down that's called compensation and tours. When you open this up, this is where you can add virtual tours, branded and unbranded. You actually have so you have two different options of tours, and then you could have a branded one or an unbranded one of that. So it's really easily easy. Let me just open up a couple ones that Colleen did that she did a great job where she's explaining this. And I want to take you on a tour of my new listing at 50839 Marshall Lane in beautiful downtown New Baltimore, just steps from Lake St. Clair. Let's go in and take a look. Stepping this inside like the height of the pandemic and a half car garage. <laughs> what do you say? This was like the height of the pandemic, remember? It was like oh, right yeah. when we were all sheltering yeah, this in is, place. This was is the like panic. The How are we going to show listings? And you did a great yeah. job. Bathroom. That and honestly, crazy. I think that this is still something that's great for the agents to do. It gives them a really, you know, overview of the home, promoting that property and doing doing your sellers a great service. So you can go in here. You labeled this one unbranded, so that makes it easy for me. Can go in and hit copy and now I can go in and I can add that URL and save that so now when that is visible on the single property website collaboration center they're able to see that link and click on that and watch your tours or promo videos or aerial footage that you had done on this on that property so really nice little feature there the fact that there's four different fields is really nice especially with all of the options that are available now i do want to show you guys something really quickly that will kind of give you an idea of the uh, value of these four fields on our website myrealsource.com we have a recommended photographers tab Within this tab is going to show you all the types of video and photo services that are really popular right now that agents are doing from photo editing and removal of distractions of you know, things in the photo or vacant homes to promotional tours. This company right here, Michigan Real Estate Photography, does a great job with adding lifestyle video tours, video walkthrough tours. They also do the 3D virtual tours that I was talking about. All of these can be branded and unbranded for you. This is that Matterport right here where they're on their phone and they can just tab through and walk through that house. Great Lakes, we had them on our, one of our Mixing It Up episodes and they talked about their services. They do the aerial footage. Colleen's hired them a few times for some of her listings and you've had a great experience with them. They've been fantastic, yeah. Yeah, they were so nice. So um, just keep that in mind if you're wondering, you know, why, why would I use all these fields or what are some ways that I could use all these fields? Here's some really good inspiration, get some ideas of what, what you can be using it for. Now you have your listing. You're ready to get it out there and promote it. What you can do, well, for one, you got to save that listing. Once you save that listing, it's live in the MLS. They get that new listing alert, collaboration center, auto email, 
home snap, all the places. Then it gets sent through our data sharing, which you're seeing throughout most of the state. We're also going to, you know, have that through all of our IDX and syndication partners that the brokers have set up. So you want to wait till you are really satisfied with this listing and ready for it to go to hit save listing. Okay, have I hammered that home enough? <laughs> you did good. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now what? What do I do? I'm ready to uh, share this listing. What you can do is you can actually go under resources and you can you know, see some of these social media lead generation tools that we have. We have a whole class on that where we talk about our single property website, HomeSnap. We also use Cloud CMA as lead capture tools too, where we are, you know, go into a lot of different things, ways that you can promote your property, ways that you can promote pendings. But once your listing is live in the system, you can open up your listing which I'm going to show you guys real quickly, just where you could find this quick action link. I have one of the single property websites pulled up for you to see, but let's say that this was my listing that I just made live. Now I can go in and hit this little check mark with a home. And what that's going to do is it's going to be a, a single property website that was created just for your property. And the importance of this is you are not going to have advertising from other agents. It's not going to lead them to any anything else. This is a simple site for you to now share on social media to get word out about this property. I can't tell you. I feel like it's kind of sunk in now over the years, but a lot of times agents were going on and they were sharing right from an advertising site another their listing and the problem with that is unless they were paying or doing you know paying for extra services they could those leads could be going to another agent um or they're could be in you know pulled to other listings so you just want to get information out about this property on your business page on facebook and on instagram so here you can go in, you can simply share this right on Facebook, which I'll show you guys that in just a moment. But look how nice this property is. We work, um, property website is. We worked with a website developer to, to design this look and feel. So it's really clean, easy. Um, people can contact you directly through this. So your contact information through the MLS, you will get a lead filtered through from the single property website, the gallery view. If, um, if he had any tours set up on this, if he had any um, promotional videos, those would also be on display over here. They can schedule showings. They can go in right here. Nice large photos to view the property cute house and now I am ready to share this listing on Facebook I'm gonna post it to my Facebook page you have a business page simply toggle it to your your Facebook business page and I have a little description that I've got on here I just want to copy and paste to save time. Now, some tips that I have for you when it comes to sharing your listings on, on social media or just any kind of lead capture is tell them what you're gonna tell them with a highlight, why they should care, and a call to action at the end. So highlighting a few of these really unique features that make you wanna click on this property this home will not last reach out you can just say contact me I, we just had two questions so you let me know when you're ready yep okay so right here really short and sweet description don't just share the property write a little bit about it that you like like I said, something about it, why they should care, and a little call to action at the end. When you share this property, 
it displays really nicely. I'm just going to hide it so only I see it right now. So that ad's not like, what is going on? Why does Taylor have my listing on? <laughs> so here you can see how it'll display. I love the way you know op opens up really quickly, but also the large primary photo displays for them. And then they can contact that listing agent right there. No other advertising for anybody else. And then, which I forgot to mention, down here is all of uh, all of Ed's other listings. So stuff that's pending for sale, that's closed, just so you can see like what he's been doing. And what's nice is you do not have any other properties that are going to direct them to leads. This is just your little tool for promoting your properties. You can find this once again, a little quick action link on your property when you pull it up. And you can you know, share it at any time. And what happens is you will be able to see those analytics as well under resources, list track. So when I'm in list track, it's gonna give me that overview of the listing activity, hit counts, popular sites, where my listing is being seen the most, and I can go through. It also sends you a report monthly as well that you can go in and you can just get those through your email as well. All right, what were the questions, Colleen? So we had uh, two really good questions. I know you kind of touched on this. Uh, virtual and uh, virtual or videos, are they always put on YouTube and then are the URLs added to the listing or can you add different URLs? Do they have to be YouTube? What do you, what, uh, can you explain a little bit of that? Okay, so there's a lot of questions in that question. So first, first would be you can upload, let's say you have the movie file. That's not something that you can do. So you have the movie file saved on your computer. You want to have it hosted somewhere. Usually somebody that creates these for you, unless you're doing it yourself, they're going to give you that URL, whether that's on a platform that they use. Vimeo is a popular one that videographers use. YouTube, where they then provide that branded and unbranded version of that link to then put in. So, I use YouTube, I swear, I think it's easiest. I think YouTube is, they've made it in like 30 seconds or less, so you can get your video URL, yeah, so I like that one. It's very easy. Um, a lot of times, though, when you do, from my experience of working with videographers, they'll send you the movie file so you have that video for your records, but they'll also upload it on a site called Vimeo that is very popular for, for uh, videographers to use. However, that's going to be where they host it, right? So one strategy to think about is, well, maybe you wanna have your own YouTube channel of all your listings and promotional videos and about me. You can have your own, your own YouTube page and then that's where you can have a playlist of all your properties. So that when they are seeing these listings, that link, they're going to your YouTube channel. So any videographer that you hire is going to send you that movie file to also download as well. Hopefully another, that another good question. question. I think there might have been another layer to that question as well. I, I think you did. I think you answered it. It's, it's basically, you know, yes, you, you can't just upload the movie file. It does have to be a URL. I like YouTube. Vimeo is another good one. I like YouTube because it's free. It's easy. There are many out there now. The next question was, can you again explain the difference between branded and unbranded tours? So an unbranded is not going to mention anything about the brokerage or trying to plug the agent, where a branded is going to, you can have your logo, you can have, if you're the one you know, speaking in it or narration, you can talk about that, that brokerage, that agent, as well as the way the data field pulls. So let me just open up that listing one more time just so I can show you guys. Good question. So today. each individual, yeah, really good question. Each individual field is sent in a feed to all these places that I've talked about. So when a site or when a link is put into 
the virtual tour or video tour or branded. You want to make sure you put the unbranded here and the branded here. The feed that gets sent is able to display them in the proper places. So if it is branded, it knows to send them to places like advertising sites where you can have your branding. If it is branded, it will go on your single property website. Now, if it is unbranded, where it has to be very neutral, that's where it goes through Collaboration Center. That's where it goes through IDX, which are eight, um, outside other agents' websites. So having whether you do two different kinds of tours or not, having a branded and an unbranded would be something that you would want to request because if you only get the branded, then you're not able to use, it does not pull that to the IDX places in the single prop or the um, collaboration center and in Paragon as well. So unbranded is really important just as much as branded. Yeah, so unbranded, basically, if you were sending your client something out of Collab Center, you wouldn't want them seeing another agent's phone number and name. So that would be the unbranded. However, when you're sharing your single property website with your clients and who you want, they can click on it and see your branded. Or you, you can even now do quick minute videos in HomeSnap talking about your listings with your contact information. So when you're sharing it out with people, they can see that. So Good, good question. And then lastly, uh, Jade would like to know, can you please show us again where to find list track and where it shows that listing data, those great analytics that you were showing? Could you show that one more time? Yep, absolutely. So to, to get that information, you can go to resources and then list track. And then that's where it's going to display all the places that your broker has set up for the feeds to go. So that can be you know, activity on syndication sites, advertising sites, IDX, Paragon. This is where all that analytics would be, as well as a report that gets sent to your email. So as soon as that single property website is created, you'll have that little quick action link and an email alert that lets you know that it's ready to be shared. And then the analytics will be tracking. It gives you kind of a time frame your dashboard, I believe, for how, I, I can't remember, I think it's got to be like a week, roughly, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I, I think it has to be a week, and I love the fact that you can send these reports yep. to your sellers to show them, you know, you can send it to your seller to show them how many eyes are coming in, and where you're, and it also shows where's your advertising dollars paying off you know if you're paying if you're paying for advertising on all these different sites, you can see what's working and what's not working, and I like that. Yep. So yeah, I was correct. Um, seven days, 30 days or custom. So you might be able to this custom, um, you might be able to, you know, go in within a couple days and get some analytics on there within but you know, roughly seven days is usually kind of common when it comes to generating analytics, at least on like social media and stuff like that. Right there is where you would be able to go in and, you know, get that get those analytics. And then lastly, right. before I hand it off to Colleen for a few little reminders, I want to just show you guys another little tool that we have called HomeSnap. We've talked about it a few times, but while we're talking about sharing your listing, what you can do is you can find, if you want, you can also share your listing from HomeSnap and get leads that way. But the one thing that we like to talk about is the profile option. So you can share your listing from or your profile from HomeSnap Pro, which everybody has as a member of my real source. You can go in and use that as a lead capture tool where they can actually search live within the MLS as well. So I can go in and I can share that. And let me just share my little description I drafted up. So are you thinking about getting into the market but not sure where to start? Check out my HomeSnap profile to receive access to the live MLS to see the most update, the most updated update to data listing information. You can easily browse, save your favorites, and text me questions directly from that property. So this is just a really nice little lead capture tool, something that you also wanna 
uh, get out there on your Facebook business page, then you can reshare it to your personal page. This is something we also go into in our lead capture tools or our lead capture class and in, in our YouTube channel. We have some recorded classes on there for you to watch as well. But just wanted to also highlight this little fun resource that you guys have within HomeSnap too. And are there any questions, Colleen, before I hand it off to you? I think uh, I think you did great. Uh, no, I don't see any more questions. I've been answering them as they come in. And okay. so uh, thank you everybody for all the kind words. I thought you did a great job. I have just two little things to cover. And then uh, one, one more question we did just pop in. Taylor, do you have another photography class scheduled? And if so, when? We have a part two scheduled, but we do not have a part one on the calendar yet, but we should be having one here early spring. What the way that I run these classes is like I said, once a once a quarter we have the program. And with that, we have a part one and a part two. So part one, to take part two, you have to attend part one. You do not have to take part two if that's not something you want want to do. That will give you kind of that overview of everything that you really need to know. It's a, it's a typical intro class where you get a lot of information and then you take that to part two, which is going to be more advanced. We apply, um, apply that information. We have homework with critiques and ways that you can improve and things that you did, did well. So early spring, I'm thinking probably March will be the next end of March will be the next photo program. So right now we do not have one for part one posted just yet, but soon. Awesome. Okay. So I just have the maintenance portion. It's just two little quick things. I know we're a little over on time. Uh, when you are looking at a listing, if you are trying to clone a listing, we always get a lot of questions on. So let's say that unfortunately the listing didn't sell or they take it off the market for six months and now you want to put it back on the market. Well, of course, you don't want to have to re-enter all of that information. So if it is your listing, and by the way, you can only do this on your own listings. If it is your own listing, you can clone it meaning that you can now take that listing and give it new listing dates and put it back on the market. Really easy to do. All you do is find that listing record. Remember, it does have to be yours. You'll go down to maintain your listing. And so I'm looking at this listing here. You can select an action here. This is, of course, where you can copy and clone the listing. So again, Again, if I want to put this back onto the market, I can do that copy and clone of that listing. Now I can go in and put in my new listing date and my new expiration date. And now without having to re-enter all of the photos, re-enter all of the information, just remember you can only do that on your own listings with your own photos. So that's an important caveat. Also, one thing to remember is a lot of people will call with questions like, how do I get the zero days on market again? If you have a listing that has been off of market for 30 days, when you put it back onto the market, so let's say you, if you just, if for instance, if you just pulled it off the market for a day or two and then put it back on the market, that doesn't really zero out the cumulative days on market. So remember, it has to be off the market for a full 30 days. On day 31, your cumulative days on market will again appear zero. So a little important note, we get a lot of questions about that. And then the last one is coming soon. What are the coming soon rules? And basically a coming soon allows you to, from the moment you start advertising it, you have one day to get it into the MLS. And advertising means a sign on the lawn, a flyer, a Facebook post. A lot of people don't think about that. So you have to get it into the MLS. And then what happens from there is it can be coming soon for up to seven days. On uh, at midnight on day seven, uh, it will automatically go into an active status. Of course, on a coming soon, that means that there is no showings of any kind. And so you do want to check your handbook for the rules on coming soon. But if you decide to make your new listing a coming soon, you do need to know what the rules are. It cannot be shown. It can be less than seven days. Um, I've had some people say they were going to do seven days. The homeowner wanted it on the market in three. So it was a shortened period. So there are also rules with that. 
All right, and that's all I had. I thought this was a great kickoff to this class. Again, thank you for your patience. This is the very first time we've taught this class, but I think it went extremely well. If you have any questions, now would be a great time to get those questions, to get those questions in so we can go ahead and get them answered for you. Lots of good questions. Did see today. anything? Yeah, we did. We have lots of good, oh, yep. we had lots of good questions. Great info as always. Thank you so much, Ed. He's always so supportive on every class. Thank you so much. All right. Well, no other questions. All right. I hope you have a great day. Happy selling, everybody. Go list, list, list. We need that inventory. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye. Thank you. Great job, Colleen. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Great job, Taylor. Thank you.